After listening to what cruise lines are telling investors they're doing this year, I'm convinced that we are going to be facing five new and possibly unwelcome challenges in 2024. But I also have some suggestions on how to work around these and get ahead of them, including one solution that you may not even realize is possible. If you're new here, welcome aboard. I'm Gary Bembridge, helping you to get cruising right, especially right through 2024. There is something I've seen happening that is going to be increasingly common this year, and that is people being bumped off cruises due to overbooking. The practice hit the headlines at the end of last year when 11 sets of cruisers waiting to board Royal Caribbean's Quantum of the Seas in Brisbane had their vacation dreams shattered. The ship was oversold and there weren't any cabins available for them, so they were sent home. Now, on investigating, I found that this is happening way more than I'd realized, but it wasn't making the news like this one was done because cruisers were being bumped off from their cruisers in the run-up to their trips, not once they actually got to the port. So what is going on and should you be worried? This year, the lines are aiming to have ships sail full and over capacity. All three major cruising groups, the Carnival Corporation, Royal Caribbean Group and Norwegian Group, have told their investors that sales in 2024 are way above any previous year and occupancy of their ships is already running at 109% capacity and increasing. So for those of you who are not sure what that means, the capacity of a ship is measured based on the number of fixed beds, which on average is basically double occupancy per cabin. But many, many cabins on cruise ships have sofa beds or beds that can be pulled from the ceiling recesses so kids and friends can share cabins. Now, because demand is high, they are overselling using guaranteed fares, which basically just guarantees a cabin grade, not a specific cabin. And they're then assuming that people will drop out, you know, when final balance payment is due. And again, then, you know, sort of between then and departure date. And then they will be able to take everyone. But all the affected cruisers who are being bumped off cruisers have been booking guaranteed fare cabins, like those people I mentioned earlier. So knowing that this is an issue for this year, what can you do to manage your risk? Well, first of all, consider booking the slightly higher fare where you get to choose a specific cabin so you know you will be on that sailing. Second, though, if you have booked or prefer to book a guaranteed fare, check in as early as possible when it opens online because that often triggers your cabin allocation process. Now there is another huge implication of demand being high and ships sailing fuller than ever this year. Fares. If you've not booked a 2024 cruise yet, you're likely to be paying more than those that have and you'll find it harder to get closer to departure deals. Cruise lines use what's known as dynamic pricing. This means as the ship fills up, the prices increase. So unlike in previous years, holding out and booking late probably this year will not mean lower or deep deals. Now I do have though some suggestions on how to deal with this if you're still looking to book in 2024 and you want to book kind of later. First of all, the highest demand and where ships are sailing fullest are in the Caribbean and Alaska. These are regions that are popular and handy for US-based cruisers, so you may find it way harder to get deals in those two regions. However, I have seen cruise line leaders asking travel agents to push Europe, both the Mediterranean and Northern Europe, because North American tourists still are steering clear of booking this year due to the kind of ongoing and uncertain situation between Russia and Ukraine and the Middle East. So there will be more deals it seems, in Europe. Second, the biggest opportunity for this year for deals will still be when final balance payment is due. So if you want to cruise at shorter notice, then be ready 60 or 90 days before sailing. That's the point when cruise lines know who has dropped out and what capacity they must fill. Now, I've noticed a lot of activity around that time, particularly with short flash sales often advertised to their mailing list and on social media, like this one I got from Seabourn. But if you go this route, you need to move fast. I've had several people contact me booking cruises in 2024. They saw those deals. They thought maybe we'll think about it overnight, but it was gone by the next morning. Demand is high. Deals go faster than ever before, it seems. But high demand and ships selling full and over capacity is not all that the cruise lines are telling investors they are doing. This next one, will also hit us harder this year. All lines have said they're working hard to increase the amount of money we spend on board. Norwegian, for example, 
say they've already got passengers on average to spend up to 15% more versus 2019, and they see scope to grow that even more. What I found fascinating and also telling is they also told investors that the main way they get us to spend more is through packages. They say passengers that buy packages are spending more than people that don't and who pay ad hoc on board. Often in past videos, I've said that whenever the cruise line introduces anything, personally, I assume that it's there to make them more money. So all those packages like Celebrity Always Included, Holland America Have It All, Princess Plus, Norwegian Free at Sea, they all make us on average spend more than if we did not buy them. That's what they're telling us. But so do the individual packages like drinks packages, dining packages, excursion packages, and so on. So my suggestion in 2024 is when looking at the packages, don't automatically assume you're getting a savings versus what you really actually would spend if you were buying ad hoc. I know that I will tend to spend more if I go with a package and I spend less if I go without a package overall because I just don't go to as, as many specialty dining restaurants, I don't have as many drinks, I don't use as much Wi-Fi or whatever. Try and cost it out. For example, use the drinks package calculators on sites like cruisely.com and cruisemummy.co.uk that by cruise line you can input the drink amounts you think you'll have and it will tell you whether it's worth buying a package or not. Look at the excursion options and do comparisons of excursion options. I talk about these and how to do that in recent videos on the topic like this one. But remember, the lines are working hard to get us to spend more on board than in past years. So simply be ready for that. But talking about on board, there is a massive change that I don't think most passengers have realized is coming. It is one thing that I have noticed and is affecting the way that I personally choose cruise lines this year and looking further afield. The lines have told investors they are focusing on attracting new to cruise travelers and they're increasing their marketing spend to attract them. And they're looking to cater more for a changing type of cruise passenger. In practice, at the expense of their traditional ones on some lines. For example, a few weeks back, I spotted ads by Holland America pushing and advertising their kids and family fairs, a line that used to be seen and was catering for a more traditional, older couple cruiser. On my last Holland America trip, over Christmas, there were 400 kids and teens, totally changing the dynamic of the line that I'm used to. My Princess Cruise in Alaska last summer was again, full of families versus historic, also couples and older crowd. It was a very different experience. As the year rolls on, you may find a different and evolving vibe and mix from lines you think you know. Many lines have been launching different classes and styles of ships and working to attract different cruise passengers that is different to what they used to do. And it will potentially start to affect your cruises this year. For example, Celebrity Edge class ships, so Edge, Apex, Beyond, Ascent, are very different ships very different experience and they're attracting a different passenger to Celebrity. I found it's almost like going on a different cruise line compared to sailing on their Solstice or Millennium class ships as are the guests on those ships. So as you plan what lines to use this year and beyond, take time to check and reflect. Is the line still as relevant to your needs or should you be looking elsewhere to get that experience that you're used to? But there is some good news wrapped up within all of this in the next issue to think about. The cruise lines have still committed to investors to add capacity in 2024, which means nine new ocean cruise ships for you and me to try this year. And the good news is that it looks like the delays and disruptions that we saw over the last couple of years, where most new ship launches had to be pushed back, from what the lines are telling investors, these are expected to happen on schedule. Though looking at the lineup, one disappointing thing struck me is that almost all of these continue the trend by every single line to go bigger and bigger, and most are adding family-focused features and activities. So again, focusing on that very specific audience. In 2024, there is Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Sea with 7,600 passengers, Utopia of the Seas carrying 6,700. Princess Cruises is launching Sun Princess. It's a 4,000 passenger ship, 
and a new class called Sphere class with those of you who've got families will really appeal to you because it's introducing things like Park Nine, Sea Breeze Ride, rope courses, and the ship within a ship kind of yacht clubby experience. So it's again a changing and evolving princess. Disney Treasure is coming. Uh, that also carries over 4,000 passengers. Silver Sea is launching the second in their Silver Nova class with Silver Ray. Again, it's more passengers than any of their other ultra luxury ships carrying 728. Even the luxury line Viking Cruises is now launching a bigger ship called Viking Vela that can carry 998 passengers instead of the usual around 900. Cunard are also launching a bigger ship with Queen Anne carrying 3,000 passengers. The other two ships are a second ship for Explorer Journeys with Explorer 2 and Ritz-Carlton are launching their second ship Ilma. Yes, this year ships are absolutely getting bigger and bigger. But to avoid one of the big mistakes I saw cruisers make last year, join me over in this video looking at how to make sure what you do in port this year does not ruin your cruise. See you over there.